Welcome to Praying Through the Psalms, Psalm 150. It's a great psalm of rejoicing. So why don't we just go ahead and read it, and then after that we'll have Nicole lead us in worship, and we can just worship the Lord together. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
rejoice together in just exactly what the Psalm 150 says. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now we are actually videoing this and you'll be seeing this right before Christmas. And that's why we put a little uh, nativity scene in front of us to remind us of that great day when God became flesh to dwell among us. The birth of Jesus Christ in that lowly stable of Bethlehem. And the angels announced uh, that this was good, good news and tidings of great joy. And so this should be a time of joy and rejoicing. And the angels also said that he came to bring peace to those with whom God is well pleased. And through the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and, and our faith in him, we can have peace with God. And as his spirit is in us, we can have the joy that he spoke of. And yet we know that at this holiday season, like every other holiday season, there are many that are struggling with grief or depression. Sometimes the holidays remind us of, of things that uh, make us feel sad. The loss of a loved one or the loss of, of a dream or of, of any kind. And so we want to begin to celebrate the birth of Christ. And we're going to be talking about praising the Lord, just like those angels did all around the hillside of Bethlehem. Uh, but yet we want to be sensitive that there are those that uh, need the Lord's presence and need His comfort because of some kind of grief that they're going through or a hard time uh, around these holidays. So uh, we want to be sensitive to that. Would you join us in praying for those that are grieving or going through a time of being down around the holidays? Let's lift them up in prayer. Believe that God will do a great work in them and put praise in their mouth and joy in their heart even in a tough season. Would you lead us in prayer, Lorraine? Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. We do praise you, Lord. We thank you for your scripture. We thank you for the praises in your scripture, God, just that you would put it in our hearts, that you would fill us with your, your scripture of rejoicing, your scripture of praising, your scripture of promises, Lord. And for those who are grieving or depressed or down in this season, God, that you would just carry them, that you would just hug them, that you will just love on them and let them feel your presence right this moment, Lord God. You, Lord. There's a lot of stress and heartache and grief, Lord Jesus, but you are able to help them to overcome. So, Lord, we reflect on your word today, Lord, because when we're grieving or sad or depressed, we look at your word. We can always get something from your word to be encouraging to us. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I want to just give an encouraging word to those of you maybe that are uh, struggling with something. I know the other day I was feeling kind of melancholy, kind of down. And, and I thought, why am I feeling this way? Well, it made sense. My dad died uh, a few years ago on December 20th. Well, it always brings up those same kind of memories. And, uh, you, you know, we don't need to stay uh, where we were. God can help us. And so I want to, I want to encourage you. Do not give up your hope in joy. I want you to think of those words. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're going through, don't give up your hope in joy. Mm -hmm. That you can have the expectation that the prayer of Jesus will be fulfilled in you who believe that there will be joy. And even in time of sorrow, there can be joy. Mm -hmm. And don't give up your hope that you can have joy and peace. Because after all, what do we celebrate this time of year? But what? He is the Prince of Peace. That's right. And He came that we might have peace. So even in a time of struggle, don't give up hope that you will have joy. I found that when I read the scripture and when I'm down, if somebody says, how are you doing? I would tend to say that I was sad or grieving or having a bad day. But I've been trying to say, you know what? In the scripture this morning I read and it encouraged me. So I'm encouraging myself by reading the scripture and focusing more on the scripture and what God says than on how I feel because the scripture is part of me and I want it to, to uh, come out of me and so it does encourage me. So I hope it will encourage you too. You know, sometimes we can help our own mental health and emotional health by what we choose to focus on. Mm -hmm. And that's a great piece of advice. Focus on the scripture and a part of what we're going to talk about in this psalm has to do with praising and our focus. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing we want to look at is in verse 2, 
there are a couple of reasons given to praise the Lord. Look at them. Yeah, let's read verses 1 and 2 again. Praise the Lord. So that's a command. We just stop right now and say, Lord, I praise you. Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to praise you today, praise Lord. You, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Now look at verse 2. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. You know, you were created for praise. And you'll never be fulfilled until you are praising the Lord, until you are doing what you were created to do. And praise should not be dependent on our feelings, as we've referred to earlier, but praise should be dependent on two things. Number one, His mighty acts. And number two, His excellent greatness. Well, this whole idea of being created for praise and always praising the Lord. Uh, Lauren, you, you had some scriptures from Hebrews and Peter and Isaiah yeah. about God fashioned us for praise. I have Hebrews 13, 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And Isaiah 43, 21. The people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Wow. So, praise the Lord because that's what you were created for. That's what you were designed for. And you will feel better the more you praise the Lord continually. Notice Hebrews 13 there talked about praise being, uh, you know, an ongoing part of our life. Not just sporadically, but continually. And God has called us out of darkness into His great light. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Lord, I just pray that light will come to your people. That anyone feeling in darkness, that your light would come. And that your light would come as we choose to praise you. Because this is what we were created for. And what you've called us to. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, think about the great acts of the Lord. As, as it says, praise him for his mighty acts. And I'm going to assume that that has to do with what he's done in the past. Israel was continually praising God for God's deliverance of them in the Exodus and God's greatness in creation. And so they were praising God for what he did in the past. So why don't you take a moment and think of the good things God has done for you. Your salvation, how he brought you unto himself. Maybe some monumental good events in your life. And just stop for a moment and praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for what He has done. And even in the law, in Deuteronomy, you had found a verse in Deuteronomy uh, about God's mighty acts. Would you read that? Deuteronomy uh, verse for us? Yeah, 1021. He is your praise and He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Wow, they had seen God deliver them Amen. from Egypt. That's what Deuteronomy was talking about. But notice he said, He's your praise. We always have Him, so we should always have praise. So praise God specifically for things He's done in your life. And also praise Him for things He's done in Bible history, like Jesus dying on a cross. Or even before that, like God becoming man. And the whole nativity story of how the Word became flesh. Have you praised Him for that today? That's a historical fact. For the life of Christ, and then His death upon the cross, His resurrection and ascension. Have you praised Him for that today? Amen. Praise Him for His mighty acts. And you know what? It will begin to lift us up as we praise yeah. the Lord. Yes. As it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And then it says, praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Excellent greatness. How great God is. So we praise Him for what He has done but look at this. Now we're praising Him for who He is and His attributes. We might say what He is, the attributes of God. So praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Well, how great is Him? How great is He? Well, that's how we should be praising Him. How about that in Scripture? Some yep. references on that. First Chronicles 29, 11 through 13. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. 
both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all in your hand is power and might in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all Wow. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Wow. Let's, let, I want Lorraine to read that again. That is so packed mm -hmm. with the greatness of God. And as you're listening to her read that again, give him praise. Now just read a phrase of that, if you would, and let's just praise him and then read another phrase. Go ahead and read that passage again. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness. Yes, Lord. The power and the glory. Amen. Yes, Lord. The victory and the majesty. Thank you for victory and glory, majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours Thank is you, the kingdom, O oh Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. All is yours. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And you are exalted as head over all. Amen. Yes, Lord. Both riches and honor come from you. Hallelujah. And you reign over all in your hand. It's power and might in your hand. It is to make great and to give strength to all. Oh, man. Shouldn't we just always be blessing him for that? Amen. Giving strength to all in his hand is power and might. Wow. Wait, but. verse 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise, praise you. your glorious name. Amen. Let's just do that. Lord, praise we thank you. Jesus. We thank praise Jesus. your glorious name. Praise you, Lord. And now we know the name of Jesus. Praise thank you, Lord. Jesus. Bless you, Lord God. And I have uh, First Chronicles 16, 25. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. He is also to be feared above all gods. Amen. Greatly to be praised. So it says... Uh, Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. And then the scripture says, He's great and greatly to be praised. Doesn't that fit? It's according to His greatness. So don't just praise Him according to your present condition or experience. Well, sometimes we will because we're having a breakthrough and we're on top of the mountain. Yeah. But there are other times we're just living out on the plain. Sometimes we feel like we're in a valley. But praise Him according to His excellent greatness for who He is. And then verses 3 through 5. I'm going to ask Lorraine to read them again because uh, I, I was reading one commentary. The preachers outlined some of these verses we've, we've gotten from that resource. Uh, but they said, well, one of the quotes in there on these verses was, it says, and I quote, These verses pulsate with joy. Man, I like that phrase. Pulsate with joy. Because these verses tell us different expressions of how we can be praising the Lord. Read, read these verses again. Just all this... Pulsating with joy, these verses. Psalm 153 through 5. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and lutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with the clashing cymbals. Wow, God's, God's not afraid of some noise. And a little dancing. Yeah, a little dancing. And, <laughs> you know, to the Hebrews, dancing was always an expression of joy. Mm. Whether it was a dancing where they would jump and twirl. It, it's not like ballroom dancing and that kind of thing that we think of today. It was nothing sensual about it. It was your body rejoicing, jumping, twirling in a sense of joy before the Lord. I agree with the author of that book that these verses pulsate with joy mm -hmm. now look at this command to all of creation it was seen in verse 6 would you read verse 6 again for us let everything that has breath praise the lord praise the lord yeah it said let everything that has breath praise the lord and then it praises the lord praise he the lord. praises the lord well all of creation will one day praise the lord that is that is a phenomenal thought. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it not only involves people, but somehow, and I know some people say, well, it's just being poetic language or whatever, but I believe all that has life in it, all of God's creation, will one day praise Him. And we do know, let me give you three verses, and I'll just refer to them. Isaiah 45, 23, Philippians 2, 10, 11 quotes it, as well as Romans 14, 11, where it says, Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Think of that great day when every human knee bows and every tongue confesses He is Lord. Now some will be lost. Many will be lost in that day because they didn't confess Him as their Lord while they were alive. But someday Jesus will reveal Himself to every human being. Maybe it's before the judgment seat. I'm not sure exactly where this takes place. But it says, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And how blessed you are and saved you are if you're bowing to His Lordship now 
and confessing Him as your Lord. Now, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and confess with your lips that He's Lord, you're saved. Amen. Oh, what a great, great moment that is when you're saved. And then you relive that every time you confess it. Relive your salvation moment every time you confess it. But there are other scriptures. Maybe they're more than just poetic about nature praising the Lord. And Lorraine has some of those scriptures for us. Psalm 65, 13. The pastures are clothed with flock. The valleys also covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. Uh, the heaven, uh, heaven and the earth praise him, the sea and everything that moves in them. In Psalm 98, 8, let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together. In Isaiah 44, 23, sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified Himself in Israel. Wow! So someday, it's like the it's like the Lord is commanding all of His creation to praise Him, and someday the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And I'm just I'm just looking up here Romans chapter eight because it talks about all of creation groaning for something. It says in verse 22 of Romans 8, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, uh, the redemption of our bodies. Verse 21 it said, Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So it's talking about all of creation is waiting for a moment when our full redemption comes at the return of the Lord and, and, and we're glorified and, and, and there's total freedom from all sin and curse and, and even the creation will be liberated. Our minds can't even fathom that. Mm -hmm. But here's what we can do by faith today. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the I'm going to ask Lorraine to close us in prayer and then... We'll end this segment by going back into that worship service with, with the worship team leading us for a portion of that song again. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let's close this in prayer. Amen. And then you at home, sing together. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That's right. That's you. You got breath. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we thank you, Father, that you breathed into us your Holy Spirit, Lord. We pray you come alive, that you would come alive in us and that we would trust you and that we would really trust you and read your word and be encouraged and lifted up and look at you more than our problems, our situations and everything that's going on right now, God, that we can still praise you and glorify you as the mountains and the trees will clap their hands, God. Yes, we can Lord. lift ours to the heavens you, and just praise your holy name. And as we worship with Nicole or with the team here, Lord God, we yes. thank you, Father. Thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's praise Him.